following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pezzavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pezzavento. Okay, good morning, folks. Um, I'm going to start out here with gold because we're really close to losing the old uh, parade wagon here from the bullish side. I'm going to post into the uh, Tiger TV. Uh, you'll see we're breaking down below the 786 retracement of uh, yesterday's low that came in at uh, 68. We're trading at 67.90. We got down to 67.5. We've got to hold this level, or uh, the next stop is 12, uh, 11.42. Uh, I'd be looking to buy gold at 11.42, uh, even though it's going to be down near those that old low that we made um, about four or five months ago, because there's a couple of monster A, B, C, D uh, patterns there that, that we could uh, hang our hat on. But uh, right now, uh, we'll just take a look at it. I'll put this in here so you can see it, where that, uh, that uh, number would come in. Give me one second to... Uh, Put the drawing tool on it and we'll take a look at it you have to love the volatility uh, in these markets because the oh shucks it hit the wrong thing this thing is so sensitive it just doesn't uh it does i know how to do it hold on i'll just do it with the abc with the uh ah there's what we want to do there so i'll just do it this way we can see it a lot easier and you'll see the perfect perfect channel lines down there near that old low and uh we'll take a look at it now and you'll see that's what's most probably we're going, well, we're, where we're headed for uh, here in the uh, in the gold market. There's actually uh, another A B C D pattern involved within that uh, in in that same structure, and we should take a look at that one also just to see what it's doing here. We'll talk about the uh, uh, just a second. There we go. Uh, not worry about it here to see what happens. And then we'll move on to the next one. The first chart that I've posted, uh, oh, we got a caller in. Uh, I think it's our birthday boy from uh, California. Brent, are you there? I am. Good morning to you, Larry. Good morning. Uh, belated happy birthday. I think I'm off by a day or two, aren't I? <laughs> it was yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, I thought so. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm hanging in there okay. Good deal. I have a fairly large question, kind of multi-part question I'd like to pose. I want to catch you before I don't want to... You know, throw off your uh, your groove there. I wanted to catch you first thing if I could. Sure. Um, so the big question here is: I know we uh, we're in the zone of this cycle date that you've talked about with the full moon and the other planetary aspects that are aligning here. Um, and then, given the what happened with the market yesterday, it seems to be setting up for today. Do you think there's uh, this is a potential for just Obviously, a temporary, nothing, nothing major, but a, a potential uh, bottom here uh, setting up. Oh, I, I don't think there's any question about that, Brent. We made a slightly lower low in the S and P by uh, one point yesterday. It was the only one of the indices that made a new new low. The Dow, the Nasdaq did not, and the New York Stock Exchange Index did not. You know, it held the seven eight six. We had the full moon. We had the Jupiter uh, conjunct. Uh, uh, Venus, so that told you, and not only that, but you've got statistics of the last two days of the month, and the first two days of the month are the most popular days for uh, the market to go up, so that tells us we're probably, and then we got the holiday, and the day before the holiday is usually good, so my expectation would be for a, you know, a three-day rally coming off that bottom that takes us into Thursday, and then uh, I think you'll come down uh, starting next week again. That's my that's my expectation. And remember, that's just my expectation. I don't think the Greek thing means anything at all anymore. I really don't. I think that's that's pretty much history. Um, just by looking at the charts and the news and everything, no one really cares anymore. Yeah, so that was kind of the other part of my question, which is more or less answered. If uh, if you do think this is the bottom, do you do you trade this little retracement? And then if, you, if you're going to do that, do you, then is it? plays out then you sell that that uh when it completes then you sell that uh, that completion of the retracement is that what your your thinking is yes the answer is yes yes no and yes 
<laughs> no, basically, the best way to handle it is if you're short, is you you lighten up your positions. Uh, sometimes you can take them all off, and then what you do is you put a sell stop below the market to make sure you get back in it. Because look what happened in soybeans. If you sold out your long soybeans and didn't stay into that crop report yesterday, you missed a 70 cent move. So you have to, you know, at least uh, protect yourself some way uh, to get back in the market. But the best way. Uh, was to lighten up a little bit, uh, you know, three quarters of it or whatever, all of it if you wanted to, and then wait to see, you know, how much the market is going to, going to rally. But you got to have spots to uh, to look at to to get your position back. I mean, that's just like that's like if you're short and you cover your short and the market rallies, that's just like being long because you didn't lose any money and now you're back in the market again. That's the way I look at it. So uh, my my area to look at it is. Uh, is at uh, 2082 uh, uh, in the S&P 500. That's back into that gap area that we had on Monday. So that's that's what I'm looking at. But I don't know the quality of this this uh, bottom. I think it's a really big bottom. I really do because of the the two things that are there. But remember, the full moon cycle is only a 14 day cycle. So the most you're going to expect on this is about seven days. And if you figure it on the 30th uh, and you go through the end, you're coming out on the 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 fifth, which is uh, the 6th, which is Monday, that's the end of it. So I'd be okay. looking to be a seller on Monday. But then you've got the Greek thing, the referendum on Sunday night. I don't think that means anything. The market might think it does. But it's pretty much uh, they've they've called their hand, and I don't think Greek, Greece was not going to pay them anyway. And Merkel just finally said, yeah, well, forget it. If you're not going to pay us, then go you know, do what you do what you got to do. So that's the way I'm looking at it. Well, thank you very much, Larry. I'm really enjoying your show. It's uh Great to have you on, you know, before the market's going to open, and just, uh, you take care. Hey, Brent, and, you, and, uh, you know the only reason I knew your birthday was because Skype reminded me. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, you're right, I'm, I'm not clairvoyant or anything. <laughs> All right, buddy, listen, uh, say, give your regards to Leanne, and uh, have a happy holiday, okay? Same to you. Say hi to Sarah, and, and just rest of your family. Take care. You bet. All right. All right. Bye, Larry. Okay. All right. Um, the uh, next uh, thing we want to talk about is the uh, the S and P 500. If you'll notice, I've posted into the room today the uh, the equal moves that we've had um, so far. We've had a a, a move during that uh, Sunday night where the market rallied 30 points and went broke down and made new lows. And if you notice on this chart, we did make a slightly lower low in the S&P yesterday, which was not un, not uh, not unsuspecting because we had the full moon there, and then and uh, we had the the Jupiter uh, Venus cycle. So that's not unusual. So that's a pretty good cycle. Now I would circle that cycle low because if we break below that, uh, we're we're really going to drop hard. The things are there that should make the market drop hard. Yesterday, the Shanghai market rallied five percent. Uh, with the with the government saying yes, we're going to help you out, and guess what happened today? It's down lower than it was uh, before, so it dropped 5.4 percent today. So these are very active wild markets. This is the market where if you're a technician, pattern recognition, swing trader, oscillator trader, these are I ideal types of moves because you're going to see extensions and uh, retracements that. Uh, that literally uh, give you opportunities like you don't see uh, very often. By the way, we're going to have Rich Anderson on at uh, 9.30 to talk about the grains. We had an explosive move yesterday uh, in uh, soybeans, uh, wheat, and corn, and we're having big moves in them today. Uh, we've got wheat sold off over um, 20 cents from the high, so we've got to take a look at some of these things to uh, see what Rich is saying on the fundamental side. But I spoke to Rich yesterday and uh, the corn report was a flat-out shock. I mean, it just literally, and beans too, but the corn was the big shocker. Uh, you know, they lost so much out of that. And then we'll see uh, see what's happening. So we'll just have to wait and see, and we'll, we'll, get, uh, we'll figure out what's going on, and uh, he'll tell us more about what's really going on. Uh, the key here is I'm uh, the thing that's on my focus point right now is the gold market, uh, 11, 6, 11, uh, 1166.90 has been the low so far. Uh, 11, 
Uh, 6750 was a 786 retracement. Silver is actually up two cents on the day, so that's uh, giving uh, gold just a little bit of a cushion. But it must hold this uh, this last fib point that we have here, folks, because uh, this is the spot where it's uh, making its uh, circle. They're, they're circling the wagons and they're filling up ammunition. So if gold can't hold here, uh, it's really got a, a long way to go to the downside, at least another $20. Uh, $1,140 uh, per ounce is what I would be looking at. And I would be taking a look at it down there because I, I like ABCD patterns, and that's one that I would like. And, boy, I, I will say this. If you get down to that area, you will be uh, looking at uh, uh, an area where nobody wants to buy it, which is probably a good thing, so we'll wait and see. I, I have to tell you a funny story here. I just mentioned, boy, you know, get down there if you get that. you know. See, and I always say, oh, boy, that's an old. You know, Terre Haute, Indiana, in an Indiana Hoosier type expression when you say, oh, boy, my little grandson says it all all the time. But the funny story is I was in Atlanta in 1970 setting up an uh, antibiotic research grant for cephalosporin antibiotics for Eli Lilly. And I was at Grady Memorial Hospital to see Dr. Harlan Stone. And it was raining like crazy when I left the hotel and I got in the taxi and I said, boy, is it raining. And that the, the cab driver was African-American, and he turned around and looked at me, and he screamed at me. He says, don't ever call me boy. And I said, sir, I said, I didn't mean anything by it. I said, I'm from southern Indiana, and I say that all the time. And then he then he sort of laughed, but uh, he said, that's very derogatory down here. And uh, I was just sort of, uh, you know, looking at uh, <laughs> that phraseology that I have. But that's just me. I'm not going to change. And... Uh, We'll see what uh, see what really happens uh, uh, with these markets and get back to where we should be. Okay, now yesterday we hit the exact uh, seven eight six retracement in the uh, the New York Stock Exchange index. The problem with that chart, folks, is that huge gap that we left on Monday. Uh, I know we were only down about two and a half percent, but with that gap down like that coming in here. Uh, with and if you look at the advanced decline line during the rally yesterday, was was horrible. Uh, it was just, uh, I've got it here somewhere, I'm going to try to post it, but it was a horrible advanced decline line. So that, again, was telling you that that's what, uh, you know, this market is really in bad shape. Uh, whether it's going to be affected by what's happening with uh, China or any of these other things, I don't think it makes any difference. I think we're going to be the ones that probably uh, pull it down. Uh, the, this whole rally started, uh, we're going to have to take a break here for just a second, but I wanted to show you you know, where the whole rally started here. Uh, I'll put that in as we get ready to take our break here because it all started in, in Germany when the Merkel uh, was talking. And I'll show you that uh, chart here in just a second. And I'll put that in here so we can look at it. And where do I have it at? Come on now, Larry. You promised me you wouldn't forget. Oh, dear, 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 dear. Ah, there it is. Hold on just a second. There we go. Get this up and I'll put this in. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Trade with confidence and clarity while using the software that thousands of institutional traders rely on to make the best and most accurate decisions. 
Choose from a thousand equities, currencies, and futures instruments utilizing the TAS architecture. As seen on Bloomberg terminals worldwide, the TAS Profile Scanner is a benchmark technical filtering system that thousands of traders rely on, and now you can too. For a limited time for TFNN subscribers only, we've reduced the price to just $97. That's over 75% off. John Logan hosted a special subscriber-only webinar in December, and you'll gain access to that archive as well, so you can learn exactly what the TAS Profile Scanner can do for you. Try this product out. No matter what you trade, the TAS Profile Scanner can help you make more informed trading decisions. There's no obligation to pay anything. Don't let this offer pass you by. Get your 30-day free trial to the TAS Profile Scanner today by signing up at TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high definition audio and video. Tiger TV exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, I posted in the uh, Tiger TV chart the uh, German DAX, which is equivalent to the SP 500. And as you can see, uh, this market uh, had some higher bottoms. Um, and uh, we made a beautiful Gartley this morning down there at that uh, 109.90 level. Uh, it then rallied over uh, 200 and some points, which is equivalent to 10,000, let me see, but $5,000 uh, in the uh, S&P. So you can see the volatility is uh, about 10 times. But remember, the margin on this is 21,000 euros. So it's, uh, it's not for the faint of heart. And believe me, it jumps around uh, quite a bit. Now, before we have Rich on, uh, Rich Anderson is going to be on of Anderson Capital Management. I wanted to discuss the euro here a little bit because we've had some uh, interesting moves here over the last few days in the euro that are continuing uh, on as we do. But uh, you'll notice uh, Sunday night we had that big gap down of uh, 200, almost 200 points uh, in the euro, and it stopped exactly at the 786 level at 109.50. It then proceeded to rally 330 pips up to 112.80, uh, which was just above the 61% retracement of the previous high. It missed that by about 25 pips. Now what's happened over the last three days is we've completed an ABCD pattern again at a Fibonacci level at 1.1075. The low was 1.073. Uh, right now we're about 20 pips higher than that. So as long as this level holds, uh, we have a pretty good chance for the euro to uh, have a little bit of a rally. But frankly, uh, long term, the euro looks like it wants to go, you know, down to the level of, uh, you know, 109. We've talked about this uh, many times before. I think we should 
put it in here again just to show you what it looks like, and we'll be able to uh, take a look at it. Uh, I've had a request to discuss copper, and frankly, uh, it's it's not on my watch channel, uh, Marshall. I'm just not able to do it with any. Uh, I could sit here and, and BS my way, which I do most of the time anyway. But uh, this is not one that I'm watching right now. I believe that copper is probably in a downtrend, but I haven't even followed. I follow gold and silver religiously, uh, but copper I have not followed since uh, it got down to that uh, uh, two. 250 level and really there hasn't been enough volatility for me to to really get involved in it so that's uh, one of the reasons why i'll pass what i'll try to do is i'll try to pick up pick up a uh, a chart on a copper during the break and we'll see if uh, we can look at it but i believe it's in a downtrend like most of the commodities are uh we are uh, you know basically deflating in some of these commodities where, where the, if it weren't for the grain markets yesterday you know, it would have been even a worse day, but uh, with the corn up uh, uh, 30 cents and beans up 70 cents and wheat up 30 cents, it was pretty hard to find anybody bearish. Now, this might only last a day or two, uh, so we'll see if it means much, but uh, we've had a little bit of a sell-off. We're going to have Rich Anderson on at the break to discuss the grains uh, for sure, and then I'll try to get some information uh, on copper for you. And then we'll uh, we'll see if we can find out something uh, for it. I, I can't trade everything, and so I narrow things down to about 12 things that I watch. I watch the six major cross rates, gold, silver, uh, crude oil, heating oil, gasoline, wheat, corn, beans, soybeans, treasury bonds, treasury notes. Uh, that pretty much co natural gas, uh, that pretty much covers up. Uh, and those are wonderful things to trade because they, they have some really good volatility and they trade 24-7. Uh, so these are uh, the ones that I follow. I used to uh, trade cro copper quite a bit. And uh, look, someone asked a question, why the financial markets are, sh are shrugging off Greece? Folks, I don't think it makes any difference. That's the basic, the bottom line. I mean, you're talking about uh, around 3% of the European Union, and it's not going to be a big deal, uh, in my opinion. And I'm not even sure that they're, they're going to, uh, not take the deal. I don't know. You know, they might come back in uh, later on. Who knows? But that's what we're watching here with uh, some of these things that we're looking at. So we want to keep an eye on uh, the main things. The key, the key thing that I'm watching right now, folks, is this rally that we have going on. It should extend into uh, today, tomorrow, and then Monday when you come in. If this is correct, we should start uh, heading down. Now, if we're really strong on Monday, that could be a game changer for how much this rally is going to be. But the, the ideal point of the rally would be to come up into the area of that 282 level uh, in the S&P, a 2082 level in the S&P. That's what you'd really want to be watching. Now, the, the middle A's crazies are going to be putting on their positions here in just a minute. We're going to see how much they goose the market. Uh, every time we've had an opening like this before, they faded it. So whether they do it today or not uh, remains to be seen. So... We'll be back here in just a minute after the uh, break, and then we will have Rich Anderson on. Quiet Markets investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. 
platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you're like me, you're always looking for ways to diversify your financial portfolio. Everbank's innovative market-safe CD can help you diversify while protecting your principal deposit. In fact, Everbank unveiled a new five-year market-safe power metal CD, which combines the power of gold, silver, and copper. Metal prices are currently low, so this CD could really deliver. Consider the facts. You get exposure to three valuable metals in one index CD and have the potential to earn up to 45% capped upside payment at maturity if the metals increase in value across annual pricing dates. And should they decrease? No worries. There's zero risk to your principal here, as you still get 100% of it back. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Intrigued yet? The July 9th funding deadline is quickly approaching. So hurry over to everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD for more information, including important product details and disclosures. Once again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN hyphen CD. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN has just announced a brand new morning lineup that is geared specifically for traders in this volatile traders market. Every morning at 8 a.m., John Logan starts things off with his daily program, The Global Market Pulse. At 9 a.m., Larry Pesamento trades the market during the market open Monday through Friday on Trade What You See. At 10 a.m., Tom O'Brien hosts the Money Masters for the hour, and Basil Chapman hosts his Tiger Technicians Hour at 11 a.m. From 8 a.m. till noon every market day, these traders are with you as they provide up-to-the-second market information so that you can make the most educated and profitable trades possible. The new TFNN morning lineup is happening right now. Tune in to see for yourself what kind of actionable trading discussion they have each morning, Monday through Friday, starting at 8 a.m., live only on Tiger TV at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, and I believe we have Rich Anderson on the line. Rich, hey, are you good there? Good morning, Larry. How are you? Well, I'm okay, partner. Let's start out with, oh, first of all, Rich, uh, could you tell the folks about the change in the Globex hours that are uh, affecting us? I noticed we got a notice on that. You want to explain to the folks what's going on? Um, well, they, there was a delay at opening last night because of the one-second adjustment on the world clocks. Get but out of I, here. One second? <laughs> one second, so they didn't open until 7.30 last night. I, uh, other than that, I, I don't know... Um, of what you're referring to. I That's do know that raised margins, I, however. I, yeah, I didn't think it meant much, but I guess that uh, it, you know, one second, I just don't understand that. That sounds like some more white 2K baloney that we had to put up with. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's uh, the, um, you know, we have leap year every four years, and it's, it's, it's kind of the equivalent of that. It's microseconds that have been added up over time, and now they've got to, to adjust for it. But the exchange raised the margins on corn 25 percent, wheat 16 percent, and beans 15 percent last night, effective today. And, you know, clearly there's been massive volume. You know, I think they probably run, you know, over the last uh, three, four days, they've run the 100 uh, 100 million shorts out of the corn. There were 1,100 corn delivered this morning, which, you know, when you have a real tightness in the market, you generally don't see deliveries. But uh, it's, uh, it's a wild, it's going to be wild all summer because this makes sensitivity to weather and, and the next crop reports a week from Friday. It's a um, supply and demand report. 
and then you'll have an August 12th uh, report. All these reports are going to make the markets hyper uh, sensitive. Now, Rich, on the um, on the report for the corn, to tell the folks how bullish it really was. Um, you, you told me yesterday, but why don't you give them a little a bird's eye view of what you see? Well, they they you know they were just they were looking for at the beginning of the year we were looking for 170 bushel average yield and the planted acreage um, you know they were looking for um, you, you know 90 million then 88 million you know we'll probably end up with harvested uh, acres in corn maybe down around 85 you know you always have some some drop off but uh, the, bi the big news has been in the beans where we've just had over the last 30 days, we've had so much moisture in, in Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio, um, and it's affected the corn, but it's also affected the beans. In fact, the uh, USDA said it would resurvey Arkansas, Missouri, Kansas, and Texas, and that number will come in the August uh, 12th crop report. But, but this is just a normal thing that, uh, you know, beans have normally a two dollar rally is nothing in the summer i mean we've had a two dollar rally seven out of the last eight years yes uh, we've talked about that because back when you were on on march uh in in late uh, late may right around memorial day holiday we were talking about the potential for this uh el nino and the weather thing happening we've got this tremendous move and we've had a lot of folks uh, very thankful for you for that but the next question is what do you got next on your menu rich <laughs> well uh, <laughs> what, i think what are you looking I, are you looking to buy a break or what well, I mean, let, let, let's say you're a, an end user, a cattle feeder, a hog feeder, a ethanol plant, and you're planning on having cheap prices all summer long, and, and you're kind of waiting until August or September for the seasonal lows during harvest to really put your coverage together. Now, all of a sudden, the ball game's changed. So the first dip, um, you'll see these end users trying to extend some coverage, you know, buying some cash grain. Um, so I, I suspect initially here, Larry, just like you do in the stock market, you have these long-term moving averages that uh, some of these guys look at in, in the futures too, the 100 and the 200 day moving average. Uh, that'll be the support, which is down around $4 on the D's corn. And I think last fall's highs, 10.50 or so on the no beans. Uh, that'll be the resistance, uh, 4.40 on the D's corn, that'll be the resistance. And then if we get through last fall's highs later, um, it, it could get really interesting. Well, it was certainly a game changer on the report. I don't think there was any question about that. Now, wheat's had a 22-cent pullback from the highs last night. Did that just get uh, blown out of proportion? Well, first of all, the wheat numbers weren't that friendly yesterday. It just tagged along with corn. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> you know, so it's it's just, uh, you know, the, the rally late was just more shorts getting out of the market, and I, I'm I think we pretty much uh, covered the short positions that need to be covered, and and that's that's why you have to be a technician because you you don't know what they're focusing on, and and you can have a negative information about one market, but it, if they're focusing on other markets more, it doesn't matter, and that's kind of what's going on. I see. Okay, now uh, we we covered the wheat corn. Was there anything specific that might have affected meal or oil that could uh, be a game changer also, or is it all just in one big uh, one big uh, barrel? Well, no, I mean it's 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 mostly the corn and the beans and the and the wheat and the meal and the oil are byproducts of the corn and the beans. Sure. Um, the at at these kind of levels now, as an example, ethanol plants well, are in the red. And biodiesel, which is a soybean oil part of the soybeans, um, you know that won't be used very much. And at and at these high prices, they're not going to feed uh, wheat. You know, one of the numbers that we saw, saw yesterday was that uh, they fed more corn than what most of these analysts were looking for. Well, that's that's fairly obvious because look at the increase in uh, poultry that we have and the increase in the pork that we have, and uh, the cattle are relatively static. And you know what you feed hogs and chickens is uh, corn and soybean meal. So there's been good usage there. But this is just a typical. Once the farmer get, I, you know, I've said this many years. Once the farmer gets the, that money in the ground in the form of seed and fertilizer, the markets get sensitive. And uh, you know we haven't seen any hot. It's all been too much rain. There's only been two other years 
uh, that I can remember when it, it affected uh, the markets like this. Because you know, normally, too much rain makes grain, and it's hard to have too much rain. But this happens to be a year uh, where it's done it. But we're going to have wide swings. I mean, this is... Mm -hmm. It's not going straight up or straight down. We're going to have wide swings, and that's where you you look at your retracements that you, you know, you're constantly uh, calculating and sending out, and and that's what's going to give you the opportunities. Matter of fact, we're taking a look at wheat right now from yesterday's uh, low that we made right around 574. The rally went up to 618, and now we're almost at a 61 percent retracement down here at 593. So. It's better to buy them at 593 than at 618 in my book, but uh, whether it, that's going to hold or not, we'll wait and see, but it's a nice ABCD pattern also. Right. But that's but, basically a tag-along market to the corn and the uh, uh, beans, as I remember. Right. It, at, at this time of the year, I, I see the support. Uh, I mean, keep in mind, June 19th, we were at, what, 488? Yes. And a quarter? Yeah, uh, I, I see the 540, 550 area is probably an area that will uh, get checked at uh, some point in the not too distant future. Uh, but first, first you got to get all the all the shorts out. What happened last mar night in the cash markets is the uh, the elevators, the commercials, you know, knocked the basis 20 cents. Mm -hmm. So you know, if, if I'm a farmer and I, which of course I am, and I want to sell grain last night and, and uh, enjoy the total rally of yesterday I don't get to because they've taken 20 cents off the cash bid wow they know how to play the game don't they <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah they do they're really good at it yeah they certainly are well listen I want to thank you for coming on I know you're real busy today but it was important that uh, at least we get a chance to get your views of everything and uh, everybody really appreciates it here Rich so we'll have you on uh, in a couple of weeks after we have another crop report and you give us another some more feedback because uh, we're going to have some wild swings. Hopefully we'll be able to profit on the way up and the way down. So yeah. thanks Papa, again for your help. You can't underestimate what buying 40,000 contracts of beans, 25,000 corn, 17,000 wheat, you know, 12,000 meal, 9,000 oil. You know, that's a lot of lift in the market. Now that that lift's gone. That was that was just your position, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I pushed. <laughs> you trade well. Okay, thanks a lot, Rich. Have a okay, good that day. was Rich Anderson of Anderson Capital Management, uh, giving us some feedback on the grain markets. Uh, we've got another pattern coming up here, folks. It looks real interesting here. With gold is still selling off a little bit, we've got an interesting uh, pattern coming in here in uh, Treasury bonds. Uh, we've had a double bottom from. Uh, Back on June 10th, that we took that low out by a little bit. And then we had the big run up about the Greek thing, and now the market's pulling back into this gap area. And the uh, 786 retracement on this gap comes in at uh, 148.09, 148.10. So at that spot, I would think uh, you want to take a look at it. But because it's coming down so strongly, uh, one would have to uh, wait at least uh, uh, 30 minutes before buying it. It'd be better to buy it higher than to just try to buy it at 148.10. Uh, if you buy it at 148.10, you've got to risk about eight ticks, which is $240, 31.25 times eight. So you uh, you wouldn't have to risk any more than that. But uh, uh, this is coming into that gap area. We have a higher uh, bottom than we were uh, back on uh, Sunday. So it's, uh, it's quite interesting what's going to happen here. Uh, remember, our longer-term target here on the bond still remains at 141. So that's seven handles from where we are right now. So that's the, the main thing. Okay, we've been open uh, 15 minutes now in the stock market. We're pretty much where we were pre-market. The Dow's up 165. Uh, NASDAQ is up 40-plus. The S&P's up about 17. So... Nothing unusual. Every time this has happened this week, the market has sold off. Whether it's going to happen or not, we don't know. We do know that we had a pretty good cycle bottom come in on that full moon and Jupiter conjunct uh, Venus uh, yesterday. And uh, the, with the positive bias of the market being up the last two days of the month and the first two days of the month, that would take us into Thursday. And that's where I would uh, be looking to reinstitute uh, short positions, and I, that's a, just a three-day rally in a bear market, in my opinion. Folks, the thing that's got this market uh, under the under the weather is the next chart that I'm going to show you, and that's the, the, the real stock market, the New York Stock Exchange Index. I want to put this up and let you take a look at it because we've got this absolute monster gap here. 
looking at us from Friday. And remember, I, I'm just a I'm just a technician. I don't know anything about what's happening with Greece or any of those things. All I can tell you is, if you looked at this chart, whether it was corn, wheat, soybeans, live cattle, or whatever, uh, it, this is a, a bearish pattern. It's just uh, nothing else you can do about it. Now, the New York Stock Exchange Index um, made a slightly lower low than the day before by, by just a couple of points, which we were sort of expecting. And now if it rallies up into uh, the 109.37 level on uh, uh, Wednesday or Thursday, um, to either today or tomorrow, that would that would make this, uh, when it got up there, that would be the 20-man line. In other words, that downtrend or that that's upsloping um, 618 line, you see, if we came up and touched that line one more time, that would be it. Now, we could get into the gap area, which is up around 109.60. That would be the equivalent to uh, 20 uh, 85 in the S&P futures. So all of that is certainly uh, is certainly possible. So uh, the other thing you got to keep in mind is this thing could give up the ghost at any time. We, we really have something really bearish going on here, folks. I don't know if it has anything to do with Greece or not, but it does have something to do with China. You know, they're having wild swings, you know, up 5% yesterday, down 5.25% today. Uh, and they're not accustomed to doing that. I listened to John Logan talk about the mentality of the Oriental trader, and he's absolutely true. They don't have the sophistication of technical analysis like we do here. Uh, if you stopped anybody uh, in China that's trading the market, if you might find two that heard the word Fibonacci, I would be I would be certainly surprised. And uh, you know, Fibonacci is certainly not the whole uh, you know uh, whole measure of the game, but it's still. Uh, you know, something that you got to keep in mind because these numbers hit these things, you know, uh, you know, right on the money sometimes and you have to be able to uh, uh, to look at the NASDAQ, which has been the strongest of the group, is uh, not nearly as strong as uh, as before. So you want to just, uh, you know, keep that in mind and see what uh, see what's going to have happen. I frankly think we're getting ready to uh, break here in this gold market. That's what it looks like to me. We are. Um, you know, we've just we've made new lows since uh, we've been on the air, and uh, I believe well we're trading at uh, 11.6760. The low's been 11.67, uh, oh, within 30 cents of the low, and we're almost near yesterday's low, which comes in at uh, 166.20. Uh, uh, so if we break below that, you know that tells us that we're probably heading down towards that uh, 11.34 level. That would be what I would be thinking uh, of what's going to, uh, of how that's going to work out. That's basically as I see it. Um, I don't see um, uh, nothing else. I mean, this is just set up as nicely as you could possibly ask for it. You got the big gap down. You're having the rally back. You don't expect the market to go down every day unless you're, uh, unless you're long and then it goes up every day. But uh, this time it might be just a little bit different. Uh, watch these bonds at this uh, 48. Uh, uh, 10 level, uh, they should have some really good, uh, really good support there, in my opinion, and I think that would be really, uh, really be uh, uh, important to watch that. In fact, is I, I'm going to be buying bonds at 148.10 and risking 10 pips, but whether that's going to, whether you want to do that or not, I don't know. It's up to you, but it's a, just a pattern is all it is. I'm going to take a little break here, and then we'll be right back. take a hands-on approach to managing your investment strategy. You're always looking for the next trading opportunity to magnify your perspective. Direction Shares connects sophisticated traders with a powerful array of ETFs from a wide range of asset classes. The markets may go up and down, and you want tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of 
of shorting and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor, Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing, next on TFNN. Back, folks, and I wanted to uh, end the show with a uh, one more comment uh, about the, uh, the gold market. Uh, while we were on our break, I uh, drew in the uh, uh, butterfly pattern that will be completing down here at this 1135 level. That's equivalent to the old low that we made back uh, five months ago. Uh, that's a perfect ABCD pattern. Uh, it will also be a butterfly pattern coming off of the last 10 days. And if you looked at this really closely from the high, uh, the high we made back on uh, May the uh, 17th to the low we made back on uh, June the 5th, if you took the high to the low area and measured that, you'll see that that comes in. Uh, this should be coming in uh, today or tomorrow in the uh, in the gold market. In other words, the, from the high to the low is equal. Um, that's the, the, the real key to look at. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here to watch this. Uh, hopefully I am. If I got time, and I think I do, you'll be able to see this uh, and unfold. And we want to watch this really closely here for a potential buy in the gold. That's our last chance. Uh, that's that's it. <laughs> There's nothing else more uh, more than that to uh, to really to really look at it here. So we'll just po post this in and you'll see that. Uh, you know, we'll be looking at a situation where we have the time down will be equal in the AB leg and the time down will be equal in the CD leg. And that will come in uh, right around the uh, right over the weekend, I guess. It's what it looks like. So 
Uh, it looks like it's around the uh, 10th of June, so it's got several more days to go. It might be a few days to get out to that level, but that's what it looks like uh, from the, from here. Let me double check to make sure I put that in there correct. No, I'm wrong. Just a second. It's it's uh, it's sooner than that. It's going to be over the weekend. Yeah, it comes in on Tuesday, so we'll watch that uh, gold. But that's our that's a spot that we're watching in the gold is down here at the 1140, 1135 level. That should be uh, the last uh, the last part of it. Remember our old low that we had uh, came in at 11:40. Uh, that was uh, six or seven months ago. So that's something that ought to be uh, you know pretty interesting to you know to keep an eye on. We've got the stock still holding up really good with the Dow up 160, uh, S and P's up uh, 15, and the uh, Nasdaq is up uh, 37, 47. So live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.